everybody, it's Elizabeth. So it is Saturday. Happy Saturday, everybody. And it is also the week of Valentine's. So I thought I would actually go ahead and do a video about my favorite love stories. Now I will admit, I am not really somebody who seeks out love stories. I'm a bit of a cynic that way. I love romance, but I don't really want to overindulge in it just because most of the stuff that I read about is either a little bit unhealthy or a little bit very unrealistic. And so I kind of got that, I kind of got that from a very young age and I was very hesitant about the love stories that I would read. So a lot of these books I'm about to choose, I like for a lot of different reasons, not just the love story, but the love story really like makes it better. So, okay. Uh, so the first book I really want to talk about is actually one of my favorite series from when I was a little kid. Uh, it is by Lloyd Alexander. It is per the Perdane Chronicles, the Chronicles of Perdane. Uh, this is the third book, The Castle of Lear. So the thing that I really liked about this series is that the hero, Tyron, he, for the first two books, he starts off being like, I'm young, I'm a hero, I'm gonna fight evil. And then when he goes to do it, he comes back and he's kind of like, wow, a lot of crazy, awful things happened during war. I feel a lot more competent now, but do I necessarily feel like a hero? And so really, the there's five books in the series. For the next three books, he's a lot more humble. He's a lot more realistic. And in the end, when he becomes the king, like you feel like he's really earned it and he's going to become a very, very good king. Now, the reason I love this as a love story in the very first book, you meet uh, Princess Alonwi, which, by the way, Disney made a movie of this, kind of, uh, The Black Cauldron. So if anyone remembers that weird-ass Marilyn Manson acid trip, which I loved, then that's what I'm talking about. Um, so Princess Alonwi is just, you know, your typical feisty princess. She was captured by her crazy aunt and kept in the dungeon for her magical powers because Princess Longwood has magical powers. And she grew up just kind of like, this, this girl is basically the epitome of the word fight me. So the lovely thing about her though is that while she puts up with none of Tyron's shit, she also encourages him because when she's not putting up with it, she's also basically saying like, hey look, you get down on yourself a lot and that is dumb. You really shouldn't. You're a really cool person you can do this, it's gonna be okay. And also you have me and your friends, so we're gonna be fine. So this book actually is the third book in the series when Tyron kind of starts realizing he's in love with Alonwi and they grow up throughout the series. And this is also the book where she's being forced to basically go to princess camp because she was kept in a dungeon and then was living with a pig farmer and an old man for the next couple of years and the old man's kind of like so you need to go learn how to be a princess and she's like whatever i can take care of myself because again fight me and he's like no 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 there's a little bit more to being a princess than just learning how to like swing a sword so you need to go do that so that was one of the reasons i really liked this series is not because it's not just because like the relationship between him and alonwi is very sweet and realistic in how it kind of grows. It's also realistic in how people grow up in general. So I really respected it and I also really like the relationship between him and Alonwe. So Chronicles of Perdane, very quick read, great for kids. All right, the second book that I want to talk about is Agatha Christie's Tommy and Tuppence. It is in typical Agatha Christie fashion, a good old fashioned whodunit, but honestly it's a little less Miss Marple and Poirot and way more buddy cop. So, cause I, and that's one of the reasons I love it. Uh, Tommy and Tuppence are friends and they're sitting together and they're kind of like, hey, we should just start a detective agency cause we're bored. I think that's hilarious because it would be like me sitting with my friends and being like, I'm bored, let's make a Facebook page for a detective agency. And then we actually solve mysteries. That's hilarious. So anyway, they go on all these misadventures they solve the mystery and at the end they're kind of like, oh crap, yeah, I'm in love with you. Yeah, this is this has got to happen now. So it's really cute. It's really well done. It's also a very quick read. I really recommend it. The next book I want to talk about is actually Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen because you can't have a love story list about books without having little Jane Austen on it. And I think that this is honestly one of my favorite Jane Austen books. I love the hero, Catherine. And Henry Tilney is 
adorable. He's just the cutest. So this story is actually one of her very first novels. And you can tell because she'll just go on these random tangents of just like, hey, novels are a legitimate form of literature. Screw you, you old stuffy people. And it's kind of hilarious. Sorry, I keep wiping my eye, by the way, because I have bad allergies. So my apologies. Anyway, I love how she treats her heroine in this one because Catherine is basically just a nerd who lets her imagination get the best of her, which is deeply embarrassing for me because that's something that would have happened to me a lot but it's also just really sweet um she really takes care of her and also Henry Tilney is just very earnest cute like it was the first time that I read I didn't read this first I'd read a couple of her novels since then and it was the first time where I was reading it and typically I felt like up until now, the way that I read her books, it was like the first guy that she meets is not the good guy, and then the second guy she meets is the good guy. This was the first one where I kept waiting for something to go wrong, but nothing went wrong with him. He's just a really great character. So I was really impressed, and I loved this book. It's so sweet. So I would really recommend Northanger Abbey. I'd also recommend this uh, version in general because it has an introduction by P.D. James. P.D. James knows her Austin. She's just damn good at what she does. So, Northanger Abbey. This next one, hear me out. Uh, Card Captain Sakura is a manga by Clamp. And Clamp is a team of four female writers. They This is a really, really famous series. Uh, it was my introduction to Magical Girl. Now, Magical Girl genre is basically... A girl gets magical powers, wears cute outfits, fight evil, fights evil, and discovers who she is as a person. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. So, Card Captain Sakura is about a little girl in Japan named Sakura, and she finds out that she is the keeper of the cloud cards. Uh, the cloud cards are essentially these cards that were made by a magician Clow, and they're really just they're not evil, they're not good, they're just kind of ambivalent forms of power. There's fire, water, spring, not spring, uh, flowers. Uh, there's a bunch of really random ones that I felt like they were random, but you know, whatever, it's fine. And so her job is to capture them all, kind of like with Pokemon, where you like throw the Pokeball at it and it's supposed to capture it. But in this one, she captures it with her little wand and um, writes her name on it, and now they're hers, and she they, they're kind of her friends, and she can use them. So Sakura's doing her thing, like capturing these cards, and this little boy comes in from China, Sharon Lee, and he's actually the descendant of Clow, and so he's been trained to think that he's the one who's going to capture all these cards, and he's a very serious little kid. Like, for most of the story, like, there's two parts of the series. There's card capture Sakura, and then like there's a second part where she's keeper of the class she has all the cards and now there's like other stuff going on um and the first part of the series he's honestly a bit of a sourpuss because he's just really serious and it's just like just hmm. and it's not until the end where he kind of respects her and is really on her team and it's just like he kind of really learns to care about her as a friend and then realizes that he's in love with her. Now she's in love with somebody else, and so he's kind of at that point where he's like, I mean, yeah, this sucks, but also he really just genuinely cares about her and, want her and wants her to be happy. So it's a really sweet little story. Um, she does fall in love with him in the end, and it's just adorable. And also the art is just freaking cute. Um, let me see if I can find some really like just adorable, adorable art. It's, I've always said it's kind of the series that gave Magical Girl a decent name. I don't know if that's true or not. Now, I will say that this series has a lot of, like, highly, I don't know if I would call them progressive relationships. Um, but look at how cute that is. Uh, there's a lot of LGBT stuff in it, which is good, but also they do a lot of queer baiting, which is not good. And there's a few relationships, like there's a relationship between like a teacher and a student that I'm kind of like, no, I, I don't, I don't like this.
this one. Um, but overall, it was honestly probably my first introduction to a lot of that stuff. And again, the art was just really cute. And the story between her and Sharon is just like... Ugh. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is Captain Crowley's Mandolin. It's a film with Nicolas Cage in it as well, and he's actually good in it, and not weird Nicolas Cagey. Um, I watched the movie first, and then my dad told me it was a book, and so I went and found it because I really liked the movie. This is the story of occupied Greece during World War II. It starts off with um, the local doctor's daughter, she falls in love with this kid, that, this kid, this guy that she knows. Um, they get engaged very quickly, and then he goes off to war. Well, while she, while he's at war, she's kind of realizing, like, I don't know if I love him, actually. Uh, one of the things that happens is, honestly, she finds out that he can't read. And as a very educated woman, this really kind of shakes her. And, and she's just starting to have a lot of second thoughts. Now, in the meantime, the Italian army and the German army come in. And Captain Crowley has to stay with their family, and they fall in love. Um, one of the reasons that I really appreciate this book is that her dad gives her this kind of speech. And it was the first time that I'd heard this said explicitly. But he basically tells her, look, passion is great. You need that to get a relationship started. But the thing that's going to sustain you for the rest of your lives is that everything after passion. Like, are you still going to be in love, this person, in love with this person when the passion is gone? Honestly, that's something that I've found to be very true even in my marriage. Like, there are times when I look at my husband, I feel very passionately in love with him. But there are far more times when I'm looking at him and it's a very quiet kind of, yeah, yeah. You're the greatest person I've ever known. <laughs> I'm such a fangirl. I'm sorry. Um, there are a lot of times when I just look at him and the love that I have for him is not crazy, wild, passionate, but it's just very quiet and comforting and lovely. It's, it's nice. So that was the first time that I read something explicitly about this. And also, this is just a well-put-together book. I really enjoyed it. It ends differently from the movie. In the movie, they he goes away and they never see each other again. I think he dies. But in this one, they meet again, but it's not in the way that you'd expect. So, not really sure how I felt about it. But overall, I really, really, really loved this book, so I would recommend this. So those are the books I would recommend for Valentine's Day reading. If you can't read any books or you don't have any time, the movies that I would recommend are Stardust, I love it, uh, Moonstruck, another Nicolas Cage one. I swear, I don't have a thing for Nicolas Cage. It's more like I have a thing for good movies, and then occasionally he shows up in one, and I'm like, what's up? So anyway, Moonstruck is awesome. And then I also really love The Pain and Veil uh, with Edward Norton, which will make you cry. Just so you're aware. You're going to cry. My mom and I watched it together. We both have a little bit of a crush on Edward Norton now. And we both bawled. It was great. So <laughs> I hope you all have a great Valentine's Day. Tell me if you guys have any plans. Do you like to read a few love stories to get yourself in the mood? Or are you just kind of like, screw Valentine's Day? I personally love it, not just because like I like to read I like to indulge in a little romance every once in a while. But honestly, I just really like the colors red and pink. And Valentine's Day is full of red and pink. And it's kind of the greatest. So tell me what y'all think. And I hope y'all have a great week. Bye.